So Andrea, uh, you're working at, uh, at EatWiv, a uh, startup also here in, in the base in Israel. Mm -hmm. So uh, first about you. So uh, what are you doing at, uh, <laughs> at EatWiv? I'm Andrea and I am the head of all the global development at EatWith. Uh, EatWith is a global community of passionate home cooks and they open up their own dinner tables instead of opening up restaurants. So it's a way for them to express themselves in a culinary way um, as well as helping not only for locals but for travelers as well who are looking to understand a culture through food. Uh, we started here in Israel about three years ago and now uh, our main office is now moved to San Francisco with our last round of funding. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, there's a few of us on the team that stay in this office here. And what's the story behind the concept? So, 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 so who thought about it? And, and, and also, how, how, did, how did it make it from an idea to the first steps of reality? So the concept was formed by our uh, co-founder, Guy Michlin. And he was traveling around the island of Crete with his family a few years ago, and he kept going to the same type of tourist restaurants, tourist trap restaurants over and over again. So he wasn't with actually Greek people, he was just with other travelers. Uh, for him, he didn't feel like he was understanding the culture quite well. So through a friend of a friend, another connection, he wound up um, meeting someone that could bring him to a home dinner. Uh, so he went to this friend of a friend uh, who were Greek people and they took him in for this home cooked meal because they said, People, real locals, they eat at home. Uh, so he went there and he said this, this is what really made him understand the culture. And when he came back, he thought there has to be a way to replicate this all over the world. And then what did he do? <laughs> so he started it out here. He understood that this was already happening. Um, in so many places of the world, pop-ups are a thing. Uh, whether it's because it's very trendy or just um, whether it's just a way to invite the locals in uh, for interesting food. Uh, so we started out here in Israel um, with a pilot here in Tel Aviv and also Barcelona at the same time. And we understood that this was definitely something people needed. They needed when they traveled to understand culture through food. They needed um, a different option other than just going to all these tourist trap restaurants. This was a real experience. The interesting thing that we found was that the locals started coming wasn't just about the travelers, that the locals were finding an experience in here that was relevant for them. Meeting new people, food that they couldn't get in restaurants, all of this put together made it just a marketplace for underground dining experiences. Okay, and, and was it a, a, a big success from, from the first day or, or how did you also bring out uh, the right balance in demand and, and supply on the platform? Yeah, of course, you know, we had many learnings along the way and we were finding uh, that more and more people were enjoying it. and. We have so many applications uh, every month of people all over the world that want to join us in our community. Um, but the challenge is, of course, I mean, as we grow to new places, every place is a bit different. So we have um, this as a challenge for sure. And what is your growth strategy? Do you just uh, enter a new city or, or do, do you just open the platform and everybody in the world can join? Uh, currently, we're only open in mm. um, big cities. Uh, we don't we're not ready yet for it to open it up completely to the to the whole world um, but we are very interested in getting the best food entrepreneurs um, as part of our community so we evaluate every application on a case-by-case -case basis okay and, and uh, in, in, in which cities are you now uh, uh, live we're in 165 cities okay, so <laughs> just uh, say which one <laughs> so i mean we're yeah. very big in, in europe right now uh, we're growing quite rapidly all over the u.s uh, we're also in a bit of Asia, Tokyo, Hong Kong, uh, a bit of South America, and um, ranging from different areas of Brazil, Argentina. Uh, so it's growing. It's mm, definitely growing. And, and, and what is your role in the, in the company? I do all the global development. So I'm the one in charge of uh, growing and building the communities in um, all the different new places that we're curating all over the world. Okay, cool. Uh, I think also a big difference between startups in the Netherlands and, 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 and here in Israel. In the Netherlands, they say, okay, <coughs> we're a Dutch startup and they first want to grow and be perfect in the Netherlands. And then they think, okay, maybe we can also scale to other countries. I think most startups I talk to over here in Israel, they say, okay, we want to use Israel or here in Tel Aviv as our test market. But uh, sure. how better we want to grow to other uh, countries? We definitely have metros that uh, we use as more test market areas that we're trying to um, curate better. But every place is really different. And 
well, Airbnb makes sense or other sharing economy platforms make sense because it has to be very much the same everywhere in the world. Eat with in terms of food culture is very different. So it makes sense that every market is different. So there isn't really one exact playbook to use. And give, can, can you give me some examples of the difference uh, in these markets? Sure. I mean, take the Netherlands for one. Uh, you find that culturally people like to plan in advance. So really, if, really. <laughs> yeah, <that's new> for <laughs> me. So if uh, if one of my hosts gets a request just a few days before, it's really hard for them. They like to plan a few weeks in advance. So that's definitely uh, a challenge when it comes to the culture there. Um, so yeah, different different markets have different challenges according to supply as well as demand. Some places have more travelers, some places less. Here in Tel Aviv, it's definitely more focused. Uh, we have more locals than than travelers actually, because of course situation here we don't always have a big um, tourist population so it makes sense that it's, it's a lot of locals and can also can the hosts also say okay i want only the tourists or i can want uh, only local people with we got the a a uh, no no i mean anyway the people that we have on the platform they just want a good group they they're not interested in picking or choosing that type of thing anyway but it's it's not really conducive to our platform and what's the average size of the group of people who are eating together? Um, I'd say between, I'd say around 10, uh, between 10 and 15. Normally it's, I mean, every host can fit something different. So we have hosts that can fit only five people in their homes, others that can fit 25, but I'd say median is around between 10 and 15. And how do you uh, make sure that also the quality of, of the of, of experience, because it, it's not all, uh, only about the food, sure. but it's also about the experience. So how, how do you can stage these experiences? Absolutely. I mean, we check everything. Um, it's why the platform is the size that it is right now, because we believe in quality over quantity uh, before we open it up to everyone. So it starts with a very major checking process. Uh, first, it's an application through the site. Uh, then it's an interview over Skype with me and then next we do send someone to a test event to take pictures and make sure that the place is okay, checking off every part that we need to check to make sure that the experience is great, that uh, the food is good, that the place is clean, all of these things that go together. Okay, so, so that's really, really focused on quality? Uh, Very focused on quality. We accept 4% mm -hmm. of the applications. 4%? Yes. Okay, that's, uh, that's really interesting. And, 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 and what are the main... Uh, reasons why people uh, don't succeed and, and, and come on, on, on the, 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 the part of the 96% uh, of, uh, of nodes? Uh, it could be many things. The major part is location. It's not actually skill or anything else. Because we're only open in certain areas right now, um, or want to be in major metro areas, the location is a huge part. Where for now, um, although at some point it might change, for now we are only really we're checking the areas. We check to make sure it's a good area, um, that's you know that it's really within a certain area that is good for both locals and travelers. Um, so we're checking this. So location is usually a major factor. On top of that, of course, you know we have to check the cooking, and if we see through the application it's not in the direction we're looking for, then we don't put it up. Okay, and um, at what way do people fi uh, uh, find you? So, so, so uh, also what's your market strategy in the different countries? Uh, well, we are very lucky right now that people do find a need for what we're doing. We're finding that word of mouth is very, very strong and the experiences tell all. So everyone who's gone has really enjoyed these experiences and it's really, really um, moving forward quicker than I'd imagine. Uh, when you have that, plus, you know, we have a rock star team in terms of social media and everything that's happening with that. We have really good press that comes out um, because they really enjoy the experiences as well. So yeah. we're finding it to be quite an organic way of moving forward. Yeah. <clears throat> and talking about the press attention, because the press is really on to the sharing and collaborative economy right now. So that's a good thing for you. Sure. But I think it's also got a downside because the press is also getting some more critical uh, about the, the collaborative economy. Uh, also, I think about regulations. We had a talk before and he said, oh yeah, everybody asks for regulations. <laughs> but I think it's really important. And you say, okay, it, at the end, it, 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 will, uh, uh, it will be uh, solved. It, 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 uh, it will be solved. But yeah, we, we have still a gap between now and until the end. So, so, so what kind of challenges do you uh, uh, experience yourself uh, with regulation and especially also regulation in, in different countries? 
I mean, right now we're actually not experiencing too many things. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, we're very lucky that it's moving forward and there have been other companies that are coming before us to sort of move this forward uh, in a different way. You know, we welcome any discussion. We always welcome um, talking with people. We're working hands-on with um, a lot of the different ministries and people in charge of these regulations to try to move it forward. We invite many government officials to our dinner so they can see what's going on. Of course, it depends. Some countries are stricter about the regulations than others. But in the end, I, I mean, I think it comes down to many things. It's how open are we as a company to moving it forward. Um, how transparent are we in, in that way and we are um, so we definitely think that there is a need for what we're doing um, I think always the major concern is how disruptive are we and I really don't like this word at this point because I think this is the opposite of what we want to do um, we're making the pool bigger and we're taking the dining industry and we're just adding another chapter to it rather than disrupting it as a whole yeah 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 I think it's also <clears throat> because you're also not really competing on price because I take the website and, 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 and it's not cheap. No. Uh, so it's not to say, okay, <laughs> let's go uh, have dinner with Ibi because it's cheaper than going uh, to the pizza guy uh, next door. Sure. It's a different, it's different. I mean, it's value for money. Um, it's a different yeah. experience. Eat With is not something where, at this point, where you would look up from your desk and say, I'm hungry, uh, let's check the site. Because it's something that's being prepared by a person, not a restaurant. So um, it's a very different type of experience. And a lot of what we're finding is, especially with the travelers, that if you do an eat with on your first night or even the second night that you're there and you get this experience with a local, um, you understand the cuisine, you're also going to get the best recommendations of where else to eat in the city. So it can wind up, I think, helping the industry as a whole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I really believe that uh, because they already get contact with the local people uh, that can help you uh, with, uh, with the rest of your stay. And you also will understand them better, with, with, which also will, be, uh, will give you a better travel experience, I guess. Sure. <laughs> and <clears throat> talking about uh, scaling the platform, because you say, okay, well, we've got quite some handwork. I, I, I think that's really interesting, because also in discussions about regulation, and, and, then, and then that's the last time I will say that word, I guess, <laughs> is <clears throat> that also the way you get the Norwegians, from like in the Netherlands, uh, 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 there's a uh, service who checks all the restaurants. But in the end, you, you are also checking them. Absolutely. Uh, but then at your own way. So I guess there uh, is a good start for discussion uh, uh, about that, a uh, good discussion uh, with the positive end. Mm -hmm. um, but also it takes quite some, some, some handwork to, 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 to grow. Absolutely. Um, isn't it sometimes frustrating that you think, okay, I want to grow fast? Because what you, uh, what you uh, with Uber, also in San Francisco, uh, they used to uh, pay lots of attention to the drivers, but then they want to scale and then they say, like, you have a $1 uh, education fee. So I, so I asked the driver, okay, when was your last course? He said, ah, <laughs> they did it uh, in the beginning, <laughs> but now they are too busy for that. So how do you uh, prevent yourself of the, of the maybe the, the, yeah, the, the, um, uh, if, uh, or making the same mistakes? Right now, quality is the biggest concern for us. I think eventually uh, we will move into more peer-reviewed uh, aspects. But it is food. It's what's going into your mouth. It's different from the place that you sleep or the place or the car that you're riding in. It's, it's a real concern. And while we're self-regulating right now, this is the major concern. And there's no, there's no growth if it's not perfect at this point. So I think not really frustrating. I think it's actually a good sign that we can look at every person on the platform and say that's a fantastic experience. Uh, I know every single host that we put on personally and I know eventually it won't be like this of course and it'll be bigger and more peer-reviewed but right now this is I think the major important thing to building up um, the reputation and the name and everything that we're able to provide as a service. Yeah. yeah. I really hope you will start to continue to do this because I think that that's really the only way to really build a model that, that also works for the future. Uh, because that is really about the quality uh, you are you are you are you are you're making. And uh, about competition, uh, because uh, there are many new platforms like also in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. there are only in Netherlands there are about over 100 sharing economy platforms already uh, in quite a small country. Uh, yes. So there must be also quite some competition for you. Sure, I mean, there are many platforms that are popping up all about this food, uh, sharing food space. I think it really tells the world how much this is needed if more and more platforms are, are building up. And um, it's welcomed. I mean, I think it's really welcomed. There's so many different aspects of this space that I'm not sure one can cover all of it right now. 
Uh, and I guess we'll see what's going on. I think what distinguishes Eat With from some of the other platforms right now is just how concentrated on quality we are, how vetted we are, yeah. as well as how global we are. So we are seeing many, many ones pop up, but right now we are as glo- uh, the most global. Okay, cool. And, 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 and growing uh, is also quite a, 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 a thing that costs quite some money. So in what way are you funded? Uh, we had our A round funded by Greylock Partners in San Francisco. Uh, that's when most of the company moved from our headquarters mm-hmm. here in Tel Aviv, now to San Francisco. We now have a few offices. We're here in Tel Aviv, um, San Francisco, Barcelona, and New York. And yeah, it's a really incredible global team that we have, and um, it's growing. <laughs> and how do you maintain, because you're uh, uh, active in, 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 in quite some countries, you also have m- many offices, uh, and uh, probably this will also grow in the future. So how do you maintain uh, people also for their, for, for their own culture, uh, that, that they are still as a feeling that they are working for one company? We talk all the time. Uh, right now, even though we have all these offices, we're only 25 people. Uh, so it still feels like a small startup team. Uh, we're all very much in touch. And actually, I know it sounds cliche, but we're also really good friends, all of us, even the ones that you haven't seen in a year because we're at different offices. Uh, I think I talk to them more than I talk to my own family sometimes. So <laughs> it just shows, I think, um, when you're really passionate about a project and when you're all working together on one idea, it moves it quite well. Okay, and, 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 and uh, you, you were also, also, like you said before, active as a uh, growth uh, uh, person uh, for, for uh, international growth. Mm-hmm. So uh, when you look at, 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 at platforms who are going international, uh, what do you think, what, what, is, what is the biggest benefits each with has against other platforms, not only competitors, but other platforms uh, uh, while be working on a global expansion? Uh, first of all, it is an international team. We have people coming from different places in the world. So all of these different perspectives and ideas really gives you the global mindset. We're not all speaking in one language. Um, so that is also very helpful. Um, we started out with this global idea. It wasn't a startup that was very Tel Aviv based saying this could only work in Tel Aviv. We had global ambition from the beginning and I think that's very important. And you're dealing with food which um, and travelers which makes it the need to be global from the start because this is something everybody wants, everybody needs, everyone needs to eat. Uh, so it's an idea that for sure uh, was international from the start. Uh, I've worked for a few startups and have dealt with many startups that can be that are not as global, that can work in, um, that it's an idea that's very based on certain locations, so it makes the growth a little more difficult, especially in terms of culture. But food, um, even though there are different cultural aspects around food, for sure, everybody needs to eat. Yeah, oh, and, and, and what are your main challenges uh, for, the, for the future? Oh, I don't know, there's so many. The best challenges uh, that you're really looking forward to, to, uh, to solve them? Uh, I mean, I I really want to be as global as possible. I think, you know, of course, certain countries are harder to pe- to penetrate than others. Um, my dream is that we're all over Asia, so I know that it's going to take uh, different different tech um, techniques than it would in Europe for sure. But yeah, I think they're not really they're not really large challenges. I think that what we're doing is on the right path, and I. I don't know, I just I believe fully in what we're doing. So Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. So I wish you all the best with that. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Nice to meet you.